Now moving on to understand why were the temples destroyed during this period? We have seen the reasons why the temples are constructed in such a rich way. Because to show their power, to show their devotion to God. So the devotion to God and the power and the wealth and the prestige of the king was showcased when they were constructing the temples or the mosques or the gurudwaras. But when there was an attack by an enemy king, whenever they attacked the king, they used to target the temples in order to ruin the prestige or blow out the prestige of that particular ruler. The example for such, we have three such examples. One, during the 19th century, 9th century, we have uh, Sri Mara Sri Vallabha of the Madurai Pandyans who attacked Sena of the Sri Lankan ruler and he destroyed and collected the Buddhist statues, the jewels, the jewelry from the jewel palace and the mosques or the monasteries where everything is made of gold and he brought it back to Madurai. The Sena too, the next ruler of Simhalas, who considered it as a big blow of taking their gods statues to India. So they attacked Madurai, the capital of the Pandyans. And they mainly tried to relocate the statue of Buddha at the back at Sri Lanka. So like this, the wars were also targeted the temples in order to blow out the prestige of the particular king. And in 11th century we have Chola ruler Rajendra who constructed the Shiva temple. In this Shiva temple, we have a list of uncompleted deities. He wanted to defeat the rulers and bring from them the famous gods or the monuments of the deities from there. So the list starts from here. The sun pedestal from Chalukyas, Ganesha and Nandi, the Nandi from eastern Chalukyas, at the same time, he also wanted to defeat the Kalingas of Orissa and get Lord Shiva, Bhairava's deities from there. And he wanted to defeat Kali, the Bengalis and he wanted to get Kali temple from there for the Palas. So like this, he wanted to defeat the Chalukyas to get the sun pedestal. He wanted to defeat the eastern Chalukyas, which means that these are the western Chalukyas. So he wanted to defeat the eastern Chalukyas to get the Ganesha deity and the Nandis. And he also want to defeat the Kalingas of Orissa and get Bhairava. And he also defeat the Palas of Bengal and capture Kali deities. So all these are maybe the incomplete tasks. But his attention or his idea was to destroy them, attack the temples and get them back. And we also have the Islam ruler, Sultan Mahmud, who came in the 11th century and in the early 12th century, looted the wealth and the idols, he wherever the kingdoms he attacked, he defeated the king, he looted the wealth, he carried the entire wealth back to Afghanistan. And he also attacked the Hindu temples especially, in order to become the hero of Islam. He wanted to portray him that he is more powerful than the Hindu gods and the temples. So that is one of the reasons why he attacked all the Hindu temples and captured all the golden statues of the deities and everything and took away that wealth to make a magnificent construction in the Afghan mosques and all. So one such example we have is when he attacked Somnath. His attention was to destroy the Somnath temple and carry the wealth and also to become the hero of Islam. So these are the reasons why they attacked the temples. Initially, the temples are built to showcase their devotion and love and passion towards God and at the same time to show their power, prestige and their wealth to the kingdom and the other rulers also. So whenever the other kings attacked these places, they targeted the temples because they are the places of immense wealth. So they targeted them and they captured that wealth. So the examples we have seen in 9th century, Srimar Srivalabha destroying the Sri Lankan Simhalis ruler and getting the Buddhist statues, the gold, the jewel, everything from there. Sena too, in order to bring it the lost prestige back because the prestige of the Simhalas was blown out with this attack. So he came and he wanted to attack Madurai to defeat the Pandyans and recapture the statue of Buddha and all these things. In the similar way we have in the 11th century the Cholas, Rajendra one who built the Shiva temple. He had a list of items 
like he want to defeat the chalukyas of western the chalukyas of eastern and the kalingas especially these uh, people in orissa and then he want to defeat the palas of bengal all this he want to defeat and capture their famous deities from there and to put in his construction of the temple and in coming to the islam rule he want to become the hero sultan mahmud he looted and defeated all the kings and looted the wealth and the idols of gods and took it back there because most of them are made with gold or silver and especially he targeted the somnath temple which is a huge place of immense wealth he defeated that ruler he burned the temple got converted the gold into the liquid form then carried the entire gold back to afghanistan and used it in construction of his mosques so all these things show for us the kings always attack the holy places or the places of worship to blow out the prestige of the ruler and also to show cast that they are more powerful than the other kings so gardens tombs and forts all the mughal rulers humayun babar shah jahan jahangir akbar almost all the mughal rulers are interested in literature in art in architecture and they call the gardens as chahar baghs babar himself describes that how he played in the early childhood in between the gardens and he likes to be associated with the gardens playing in the gardens dividing the gardens into symmetrical rectangles and dividing it into four parts so all these things are explained in detail by babar himself and it was during the time of akbar that the constructions got it to get transformed especially with regards to tombs the tombs were got the asian ancestral style of timur's style that is central towering dome on the home and a very tall gate at the entrance this can be seen clearly at the humayun's tomb that is his father's tomb where a central towering dome which a very big one and a big tall gate and with that associated there are eight rooms that is one of the reasons why it is called as eight paradises the tomb of humayun is called as eight paradises and the shah jahan the constructor of taj mahal he did not construct only taj mahal he constructed many gardens also huge constructions have seen light during his period he constructed a very big town hall or meeting palaces meeting halls where it was a 40 pillared hall where everybody is treated equally this construction of the town hall shows that he want the rich and the poor to be treated equally that message has to be sent to everybody by the construction of this town hall and he placed his throne at a place called qibla it's a very safe place on the higher elevation and he also maintained the pitra dura where all his thrones are placed and it was that he near this pitra dura he also maintained the statue of uh, greek goddess that is greek god orpheus playing with the music orpheus music has a magic of making any beast any wild beast to get tamed so with this idea he made it because as we all live together we all have some kind of attitudes so we all need to give up that attitude and live together in this place so with that idea he has a fascination towards the orpheus music in his court or with the statue and later he constructed the taj mahal where taj mahal was also taken on the river front of river yamuna and the other side he has a fantastic gardens laid which are also again chadar gardens where equal balances are made in the symmetrical shapes so all these things gives us the idea that the gardens the tombs and the forts all were built in a well planned and well mannered way and the yamuna river was given access only to his eldest son darasuko other than that remaining all are advised to build their houses very far away from the yamuna river front in the city so like this they maintained the balance they gave special importance they constructed the gardens they maintained the beauty of the constructions also they brought new type of constructions like akbar getting the central asian style that is the timur style of tombs where it has a central towering dome and the tall gate 
which he constructed for his father and then we have the white marble mausoleum which is one of the greatest wonders of the world and has achieved the place of seven wonders in the world from india that is the taj mahal the white mausoleum so all these things are the most finest constructions during that period so region and empires it is between the 8th and the 18th centuries that the sharing of ideas went across the north to south and east to west in the all the kingdoms that is one of the reasons is that in the large empires are mostly controlled by single rulers that is during the period of mughal rule the vast empires are controlled by one emperor this gave one of the reasons for cross fertilization or cross connectivity of the architectural skills other than that we also have specific places like in vijayanagara we have the elephant stables that is the style of constructions are been imitated or copied from the surrounding rulers that is bijapur and golconda rulers at the same time we have in vrindavan that is in madura they copied from akbar's fatehpur sikri so like this they started to adopt the styles and in bengal they created a new dome that is the thatched hut shaped the dome has been created that is known as bangla dome so all these things got slowly intermingled even akbar used in his architectural constructions the various other styles so though the mughals exercised a huge control over the entire kingdom in the 17th and the 18th centuries but still the local rulers always had their own styles and whenever they established their own kingdoms they constructed the constructions portraying their own styles so this is the concept of sharing of ideas between the rulers and across the boundaries of the kingdoms this is about region and empire cut in this lesson we have discussed the great constructions started during the medieval period that is from the kutubuddin aibaks kutub minar which gives us an idea of what are the technological skills that are used in building such a fantastic construction the skills that are used to get the different geographical shapes the thin curved structures and the inscriptions getting installed on that so all these things and moving ahead the engineering skills and the constructions the tribate structure then the corbel structures so all these structures the two pillar vertical pillars holding the arches the arcuate so all these things are discussed in the engineering skills and construction building temples mosques and tanks are considered as their devotional connection to god by the emperors or the kings and also to establish their power their prestige and their wealth to showcase it to all the people and they also constructed the tanks to get the support of the people it was started by iltutmish where he constructed the king's reservoir where he got immense support from the public so supplying water or making a water reservoir always gets people support because it is believed that king should always take care of his subjects and moving ahead why are temples destroyed whenever there is a war or an attack on the enemy they target the temples they target the mosques because they want these are the places where the fabulous wealth is being placed so they want to destroy that wealth and blow out the prestige of that particular ruler which we have seen in srimar vallabha attacks the simhali's ruler the same thing sena too want to take a revenge when he took back he want to take back all the buddhist statues of gold and everything so like this the kings always attacked the other king's temples where mahmud of ghazan and gori try to attack the hindu temples and grab the wealth somnath which was destroyed and he want to be the hero of islam so all these things are to blow the prestige of the other rulers and coming to the gardens tombs and forts most of the all the mughal rulers are interested in the garden making starting from babur till shah jahan Shah Jahan constructed even Taj Mahal where garden is being placed just side of it at the river front of river Yamuna and coming to the region and empire the regions and the empires they started to share the ideas 
cross fertilization happened because the single ruler started to rule and also the sharing of vijayanagara people the bijapur and the golconda regions structures the bangla dams akbar styles in madurai so all these things show us the regions started to cross the architectural styles where akbar constructed for his father humayun the ancestral style of tombs which is in timur in central asia so all these things are intermingling happened during this period from 8th century to 18th century so these are the concepts which we discussed in this chapter of rulers and the buildings if you like this video please give a thumbs up please subscribe to our channel to get more videos on cbse syllabus